social media is a free tool to use to showcase you within your business. Did you know that people join Synergy because of you and not necessarily the company? So majority of people don't go to Synergy.com and join this business. They join because they were attracted to you and they liked you. <laughs> but what did they see that made them choose you? I want you to really think about this one, so write that question down. There should be a section, I'm not sure what page, in your workbook that you got. <coughs> so about 90% of my recruits have come from social media, the other 10% from events. Um, and here's why. I share my story continuously and I am relatable. So let's dig a little deeper into this. What am I posting? How am I sharing the Cincy life with others? The simple answer is me. I am showcasing me and my authentic self. I showcase that I am just an average person doing not so average things. I want everyone to pull out their cell phone, but make sure it's on vibrate. <laughs> But pull out your cell phone, and I want you to turn the camera on, and I want you to take a selfie. Take a selfie with your friend. You can take it by yourself, whichever you prefer. Can't see you. Hey. Oh. I have real pretty. Okay. So now the next one is taking their selfie or selfie because you're <laughs> I want you to open up your social media platform, either so or either Facebook or Instagram. Uh, it's terrible. Let's try it again. Snapchat, terrible. Whatever you use to showcase yourself in your business, open that up, and I want you to share that on social media and make a cute little function with it and let people know what you are currently doing.
Oh, I also put possibly a star, because I can't remember. And actually, while I was on that trip, I got a recruit from Facebook just by sharing how much fun I was having on that cruise. The second of my top awards was getting my first director, which is mind blowing and she's awesome. <coughs> Could you imagine if I didn't share that trip on social media with my followers, I wouldn't have gained that director. The one who joined me from the trip, which is crazy. The second is I have been a top recruiter in my superstar directors group ever since I joined. I joined Cincy in October of 2016 and have always been in the top and it's one of the greatest accomplishments that I love to share because it shows that I'm making <coughs> and I know what to do with them. So don't be afraid to share your successes on social media. Your followers want to celebrate that with you. Now, a little bit about me. I am a stay-at-home mom of four with one on the way. I am currently 10 weeks and nauseous all the time, except today, thank goodness. Um, I am a wife, my oldest son, who is 10 plays competitive baseball an hour away, which is very time consuming. My eight year old has a mental illness, which has been a huge struggle. I love to go to the gym and work out. I am a teen mom who proved a lot of people wrong. I was in an abusive relationship and had to find myself again, and since he helped me do that, I love food, so I love to cook dinner just about every night. And of course, I share what I eat on social media. People love food and love to share what they're eating too. It's a great engagement post um, that you can utilize for your social media. So all of these things make me relatable to other people. Therefore, I can build relationships because this is network marketing. So you have to network with new people and the best way to do that is being relatable. Then once you start building those relationships, people start to ask questions and wonder what you do for a living. And then you can share your Cincy story with them and let them know what it, is, what, it, what it has done for you so they can see what it can do for them. This business is about connecting with other people and building <coughs> those relationships. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, what do I do when someone tells me no? Well, first of all, what you don't do is you're not afraid to ask. You, you have to give them the opportunity to tell you no, and if you don't ask them, they can't answer. And I can't stress that enough. If someone has liked a Cincy related post, I message them and I just thank them for liking it and let the conversation go from there. They had to have liked it for a reason, so keep that in mind. Secondly, if they do <coughs> say no, don't let it get you down. Instead, you write their name down and you continue building that relationship with them. Do you know how many people tell me no? Too many to count. And if I would have let all those no's break me, then I wouldn't be standing here today, but instead I let my passion drive me. Now, I'm assuming all of you have a passion for Cincy, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here today. Let your passion for your business push you to step outside your comfort zone and do challenging things because here's the reality. Nothing good happens in your comfort zone. The magic happens when we decide to step outside of our box and truly decide to go for it wholeheartedly. Now, it's not always easy, I know. I've been with Cincy for over three years now and I have endeavored my fair share of valleys. And guess what? I'll probably encounter some more, but what I'm not doing is letting that defeat me. You can do hard things. Thank you to Chloe Cox for saying that. And if you haven't checked her out, y'all should. She's amazing. I am up here giving a speech for the first time and totally stepping outside my comfort zone. And as you can tell in my voice, it's a little shaky. I'm a little nervous. But I believe in you. So now is the time for you guys to believe in yourself. So here's to stepping up your Cincy business in 2020. So now I want to open it up to Q&A and kind of dive in deeper into like what to share, how to share it on social media, and that kind of thing. So if anybody has a question 
or a tip to help others, I would love to answer that for you. <coughs> Surely somebody has a question. Yay! <laughs> Hi, my name is Danielle Bush. Um, my question is, I don't always know what to post. Okay. So, like, I don't know, sometimes I struggle and I don't post anything. Okay. And so that's my question. What do you share? How often? When? Things like that. Okay. So not everything I post is Scentsy related. I know, shocker. But to get that engagement on social media, sometimes you have to post other things other than your Scentsy business to get people to comment. So like the food one. The other night, actually, I was really nauseous. And I still had to cook dinner, and my husband wasn't home from work, and it was awful. And I cooked that dinner, and my kids and my husband ate it, and they loved it. I didn't eat it, but I shared that on social media. It had nothing to do with my Scentsy business, but I shared how I was nauseous and how pregnancy is a beautiful thing, but yet it's been the absolute worst. But I still made dinner. Here's what I made, and people commented on what they made and uh, how they hope I feel better, and I was just able to connect with them on a level other than Scentsy. So it doesn't always have to be sensey related. <laughs> Just to kind of help you out, um, something that I do on social media, I'll do like Black Wednesdays, I'll kind of just ask people what they're warming or like what, what would you like Wednesday and have them look at the catalog or just something so they can interact. Also, um, do drawings too, so Fun Fridays, anyone who interacts on Fun Fridays, post a random question and stuff like that. So anyone who participates on my page, you know, get a month of just kind of random drawing or something minor, but that I got through posting a party. So it's kind of getting them to interact and get free stuff without having to purchase, and that kind of gets people excited. I love the Fun Friday one. I am going to have to utilize that in my business. I do do Wax Wednesday. Sometimes, so that's a good one to you for a Scentsy related post. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a separate Scentsy page other than your personal one, or are they one in one? I work off my personal business page because that just tells my story and um, things that I've earned and all that. I post on my, my personal page. I do have a business page, however, um, all of my businesses come from my personal page. <coughs> Anybody else? Any questions or tips? Um, what are your tips for successful recruiting? So, um, when I first started Sensi, I did flip the party, and I would do all these home parties, and I would tell my host, "Hey, you have X amount in um, like PRV for your party." You could join for 99 plus tax and shipping and you get all of these orders and you still get the half price rewards and you get the commission from the party. And so that was the tactic I used when I first started. Now, I just ask people, I just ask them, have you ever thought about um, the Cincy opportunity? Have you ever thought about making some extra money? Have you ever thought about what Cincy could do for you? Um, and then let that lead the conversation. Yeah. Um, I probably don't need a mic, sorry, I'm okay. really loud. Um, I have another tip also for you. So um, when I sponsor, I try to sponsor with a purpose. So I do ask people, but I am, I don't want to say like stingy about who I ask, because that's not it. I ask people that I know will benefit and I know that will, um, that want it. Like there are people that I just like have an idea about, like Christy here, um, she's on my team and she joined in September when we had the $15 join special and she did a party and she did really well in her party and I asked her if she wanted to flip it then and she said no, but at the end of the month she joined and um, I told her, I was like, you have the people that will like support your business um, and so like, um, I know some people say like ask everyone and like I do ask a lot of people, but I kind of like, I also think about who I want on my team, like who um, 
I know that I can like support or help or you know stuff like that because um, part of my why is like getting out of debt I have a lot of student loan debt so like um, if I know other people too who are like in a similar situation I can relate to them like you said being relatable mm -hmm. and um, so I guess like that's some of my thing is like I write down all the people I know and I write down like who I know also that's in their circle and I kind of like go from there so that I can also help give them because I want obviously I want the people I sponsor to get off on like a really good start you know so that they don't feel defeated right away um, and so like if you help them and say you know like you know these people like talk to them that kind of thing so I guess I try to like sponsor with a purpose too of like and help the people that um, are going to join my team to also figure out who's in their circle right away so that they're set up for success. So you have a dream team list. I do. I think that's awesome. No, I do that too. I write down everyone you know. who I talk to about the opportunity. Their name gets written down on a list and I'll share with them if we have a $15 join special, which was bomb for me, you know, and I'll share with them. Like, hey, we have this special if you're interested in joining. They either say yes or no, or they ignore me, and I leave it at that. But I shared it with them, so it's their turn to take that opportunity. You know, you can't force anyone to join, but you have to have their name written down so you can continue building that relationship with them. And I'll just engage with them on social media and, like, comment on their posts just so they can continue seeing my post. So I think that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. And also all your not right nows. Like people who will say, not right now, or yeah. now's not a good time. Those mm -hmm. are the ones always It's always a good time to join Cincy. <laughs> Especially now with the new incentive. Yeah. I'll come over there to you in just a second. Okay. <coughs> so you just make the idea to actually keep track of your contacts that you follow up with all the time. So I do have Sell with Amy on my phone. I do pay for that premium version, and it does prompt me every single day <laughs> to do those follow-ups. And um, it has helped. And um, I also, like if I mail something to someone, I do my own mailings at home. So I can just go on there and see what I mailed them. So then I can follow up, like, oh, I need to follow up with this sample. Or Google Doc Forms for samples. Um, are amazing and it's a great way to remind me that I need to follow up with all these people I sent samples out to or who got an opportunity packet um, and whatnot. What recommendations do you have for um, people who don't have a lot of support from their outline all the way up to super so I didn't have any support from my, not my superstar director, she was amazing. But my upline, I didn't have any support and I had to run my business on my own and figure it out. And I used YouTube to help me learn how to do all this stuff. There's so many training videos on YouTube, it's insane. Um, and there's some really great leaders who have YouTube channels I always, like if I don't know the answer, actually if I don't know how to lead them to the answer, I will ask them if they, like my team, if they watched a training video first to train themselves versus me just giving them the answer. That's something I had to learn to stop doing because I was always giving the answer. So learning how to lead them to find the answer helps them in return build a successful business. Is that everybody? Okay. Well, back to follow up. I can yeah. scream so you don't turn around. Yeah. Back to follow up. When do you, like, so a lot of my customers, I message them on Facebook, they read it, they don't respond. How often do you follow up and when do you stop? <coughs> so, one thing I actually started doing is I get their cell phone number. Because I am so sick of trying to find them on Facebook Messenger. Well, and sometimes, like, their first and last name is different than what's on Facebook. So then I'm trying to search, and I can never find them. So I ask them, hey, send me your um, cell phone number and mailing address. <coughs> Especially if I send out samples, I always ask for their cell phone number. And I immediately save them in my phone, first and last name, 
and put a little memo, sent a sample, potential customer, potential teammate, and then um, I follow up via text. I don't stop following up until they tell me to leave them alone. <laughs> so, until you tell me to leave you alone, I'm still texting you. But I don't do the whole Facebook Messenger follow up. It's just, it gets a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the microphone? Don't be shy. Okay. You good? So you said you're a mom and you have four, one on the way. How do you find time to manage life and your business? Social media. <laughs> I share a lot on social media, and three of my kids are in school, so it's just my five year old at home. And actually, since I got pregnant, I've been so sick, and like making samples is the worst. So I have my um, 10 year old, he helps me. He will label um, product lists, he will help make samples, he puts the samples in the bags. He's like my little Cincy sidekick, and he'll help me do all that. So I incorporate my kids, and of course, we take a little selfie and we share on social media what we're doing, and that kind of draws people in that, oh, your kids can do this too? Yes, yes they can. <laughs> Yeah. I think we'll have time for a few more. Which social media platform do you think works best? For me personally, it's Facebook. Um, I do have an Instagram and I am consistent on Instagram. I just feel, I mean, I don't take selfies all the time. And so Facebook's more my jam because I can type something out real quick and post it and then go about my day. So for me, it's Facebook, but it kind of just depends <coughs> on where the people gravitate to you on the platform. I have something to add to that. Yeah. So my team has taught me to use stories, like the Instagram yes, stories and Facebook. I love stories. You can see who has seen your story like throughout the day, so you know, okay, so and so has seen this post, whereas other people, you know, will scroll through Facebook all day and, they, and they're your friend, but they don't see your post. Or they don't like it, and they, you know, then you don't know that they've seen it. So um, my superstar director actually taught me to use stories. So I go on Instagram, and I have it linked, so that I don't have to go from Instagram to Facebook and both posts at the same time. But I just put it right on Instagram, and then I can see who has seen it. And stories has been a huge hit for me, huge hit. Yes, I am so glad you said that because I do stories too. So if you're afraid to go live on um, social media. Stories is a great way to kind of work your way up to that because you can do either pictures, but you can like take a video of yourself and then post it and you can like add cute like gippies or like um, wordings and like all kinds of stuff. So yeah, if you're not utilizing the stories option, you probably should. So I think that's it. So I want to thank you guys for coming in and bearing with me on my first go around at this. I had a lot of fun. <laughs>